The purpose of this video is to explain in a uh, simple visual way how uh, passive optical networks uh, operate. We're accustomed to conventional networks and it seems as though the optical network shouldn't work. All right, to start this out, we're going to um, take a look at the conventional network first, get an idea how the demonstration works, and then we'll move on to the passive optical network. Uh, to start out with, we have a server shown in the drawing, and it's hooked up uh, with uh, the blue represents a, a copper connection to a router. The uh, router has an optical transceiver, and the orange lines represent um, optical fiber. At some distance from the router, uh, we have a switch, and we go back to copper lines that go out to three computers. Now we'll take a look at um, what it looks like as we put a packet through this network. Now we have a, a packet coming out of the server, and you can see we have the number four on that. It's uh, destined to go to uh, computer number four over on the right. Uh, right now it's in the slow part of the network uh, going to the router. This is um, may not be as fast as, as other parts of the system. As we get into the back plane of the router, we're traveling faster and we'll be also going at a higher speed through the uh, fiber interconnect. Now in the fiber, uh, we're, this is a pair of fibers and one is going one direction, one going the other. And finally, you see that the uh, packet ends up going through the switch and going right to the computer that it's uh, designed for. So it goes back to there. I'm looking at uh, packet number one going back to the server. Now I'm going to take a look at something a little different with the network. Uh, we're going to look at traffic coming from the computer towards the server. But in this case, um, it will be uh, simultaneous uh, packets something will happen at the switch that they don't uh, collide with each other. Now you see the two packets coming out at the same time and they both have a one on them. They're heading for the server. Now uh, the packet up towards the top has stopped there. It's being buffered and the other packet is going ahead of it. So there's been buffering that's taken place with simultaneous packets so they don't they don't collide. You'll see now that they're out on the fiber and they're traveling in a fast part of the network so you can see that how far apart they are. And then as they go through into the back into the router, you can see how they've uh, now in the slower part of the network and they're closer together. So that distance between them is an indication uh, they don't travel at higher speed through the fiber than they do through the, through the copper. It's just a question of the density, uh, how much data is traveling through there. So that's shown in, the, in how close the packets are together. So I'll just watch that again. You can see how there's a buffering taking place there in the switch. And that's how that uh, network traffic is handled. And then we have uh, an optical network shown here. This is a little bit different. What we'll have here is the server again and the router, familiar from the conventional network drawing. But now we have another device uh, called an optical line terminal. And uh, basically, this may go right near where the router is, it's sort of a central location. Uh, and it basically uh, does something a little more than just being a media converter. It sets up the optical signals that are uh, designed uh, specifically for this uh, pond network. And we travel uh, out from that uh, line terminal on a single fiber. And instead of having a distribution switch, we have an optical splitter, which is a totally passive device. And it uh, splits the signal and fiber three ways. Well, many ways as uh, set up on the network could be 32, 64, possibly even 128 ways. And then the individual uh, fibers coming out of the splitter go to another uh, device called the optical network terminal, which uh, takes the fiber signal, converts it uh, back into a conventional uh, copper type signal. Again, the orange is the fiber, blue is copper. 
uh, on these optical network terminals. Uh, we've got some indicator dials, and basically these will show a section of green uh, when that optical network uh, terminal is on. And that turning them on and off is uh, part of a way to get the signal back through the fiber uh, to the optical line terminal. Since there's a whole bunch of devices competing to get back onto that single fiber, uh, this is broken up by a um, time division type multiplexing so that only one of these transmits at a time. So we'll take a look at that uh, as we send some uh, packets through there. Now this is a packet going out from the server and um, this looks pretty much the way they did before. Now one thing is uh, the color is different here than what we're using in the packet before. And I'm using that color to represent the uh, wavelength or frequency of the light. We had a different color before uh, that we were using for the optical. This is uh, probably going to be a different wavelength and there's actually two different wavelengths that are used because we're using a single fiber the traffic going in one direction will, will be um, one wavelength and the traffic going in the other will be different. It won't be purple and green the way these are. Uh, this is just to indicate that there's different wavelengths of light. The signal actually splits and those packets go on and all the fibers connected to the splitter. That one packet just split in this passive device. Now as they approach the uh, optical network terminals um, these are all addressed for computer number two, so uh, they'll be rejected by the uh, ONTs three and four, and that packet will just pass through to computer number two. Now we're looking at some traffic coming back, and we're going to see a series of packets. They'll go out here through the optical network terminals. Uh, we just saw a couple go through, and we had in the first one is when it came through that unit was turned on and so the packet passed through there and it got through before uh, while this one was waiting in number two so the ones that were blocked down here at number three so the packet is held up waiting for to get its time you can see that number two is turned on right now and now we'll see that um, just turned on number uh, four ONT. You can see the green right here. This has just passed its first packet. Packets from the other ones have already made their way through. Uh, you can see the uh, packet, which is blue, one is on copper, uh, now is in that uh, purple color, traveling here uh, on the fiber. And when it gets back here, it'll be back in the blue color. Again, the speed is higher in this part of the network and through the uh, back plane of the terminal and the router. And you'll see that it slows down when it gets here to the server when it's coming out of the computer. So this is just a sequence of these coming through. And even though some of them are held up with the different ONTs, they managed to form their way out here. You can see the space in between them and out here in the fast section and how close they get together as they get up here to the server in a slower section of the network. And so that's uh, basically uh, the way that the passive uh, optical network works in terms of this uh, time division of the signals coming upstream from the um, downstream uh, ONTs to the OLT and then uh, a simple division on the way out of broadcast type of thing, similar to the uh, old uh, Ethernet networks using hubs. Then using the uh, ONT to uh, reject the um, packets that aren't intended for that particular uh, address. I'll watch that again. Now one point that uh, you'll see here is that while all those packets are coming uh, back towards the server, 
Uh, I get another transmission from the server that you'll see going out. So you got number four there. Now this um, transmission, so in the green, is uh, going this time to computer number four. So you can see now the number four here that it's passed through that ONT and it's on the way back. Another point here is is that on the uh, optical network, that uh, green packet travel in the opposite direction from the these violet colored ones. That works perfectly well with the light in different wavelengths, so they, they don't interfere with each other. Basically, that's it. Uh, in the next video, we'll get into a dynamic bandwidth allocation, which uh, makes this work a lot more efficiently.